Hi everyone, my name is Mike Shaw and I'm the instructor for the Star Trails and Night Photography online course at the Brian Peterson School of Photography. You can see here one of the types of images we cover in the course. This is last month's Harvest Moonrise through the north window at Arches National Park and you can read all about how to line this type of shot up for the next uh, full moon at the blog link at the, at the bottom of the uh, screen here. And of course you can always take the class and learn all about this and the Milky Way and so much more. But in any event, we've got five really cool photographs to go through this week. I'll just jump right into it uh, with this first one over here, which shows um, the, uh, the Kilchurn Castle in Scotland. This was submitted by Suzanne Landolt, and Suzanne writes that this is the Kilchurn Castle in Scotland. I was there early morning at dawn. In the beginning, the castle was not visible due to the fog, but the fog cleared a bit and the castle appeared. I included the reed in the picture, the feeling uh, that gave a bit more depth. This was shot with a Nikon D4 and Nikkor 24 to 85 millimeter lens set at 52 millimeter focal length, an ISO of 320, an aperture of f11 with a shutter speed of 1 6th of a second on a tripod with a Lee neutral density soft filter. So what I'm going to do in this image and all the other images is to first go through a few things that, in my opinion, personally, I feel uh, could be considered to perhaps improve the images. And then in each case, I'll then go through with the different features and aspects of the images that I thought really worked well. So to begin with, with this image, it's kind of hard to find something, but the uh, couple things that come to mind uh, really bear on the composition of the image and less so on the technical aspects of the exposure, because I think the exposure is just great. Um, but uh, specifically on the composition, the first thing that comes to mind, I'm going to do a crop here as you can see, is that the horizon goes straight through the center of the, of the image, maybe a little bit tilted, hard to tell. But then we also have this massive amount of gray sky uh, in the upper part of the, of the image, as well as the gray, sky, or the gray reflection in the bottom. And I remember a, a comment made many years ago that you really don't need a lot of uh, gray sky in an image for the viewer to know that it's there. So we can get rid of a lot of this and really draw the attention back into the castle and these reeds that I think work well. So again, um, I'm going to illustrate the type of composition that I had in mind uh, in doing so through this uh, crop. And of course, the, um, there is some scope for doing this type of a crop uh, in camera because you're, have to, you have a little bit of room in your zoom lens and to do something along these types of lines. So what I've done here, as you can see, I've eliminated this, this bottom reflection of the sky completely and reduced the amount of uh, gray sky in the in the top part of the image and that's really made the castle just take up a proportionally greater fraction of this area and thus bring it as a more dominant uh, compositional theme. We also have a more you know two-thirds uh, you know sky and, and lock uh, mountains and then one-third reflections in the water from a compositional point of view. I do like the reeds. I think you did a great job in balancing the solid ruggedness of the castle with the delicate slenderness of the reeds. I think that's a nice compositional point. But let's go ahead and make the crop and you can see how that affects the overall, um, the overall composition. Something to think about. The other thing I thought I'd just show you that strikes me is, I'm going to turn this into an active layer, is just to bring out the uh, features of the castle using the camera raw filter as you can see here. So we're going to go ahead and activate that and then we're going to use this spot adjustment tool that's within the camera raw filter to uh, really enhance the appearance of the castle. And what you can see here is a, a leftover a set of commands from the last time I was working with this. Let's bring the exposure back down, let's bring the shadows back down, let's bring the saturation back down, uh, bring the blacks back up. So everything is at zero. And what we can do is the two tools that we use a lot in the Star Trails and Night Photography course, with the Milky Way in particular, are the clarity and the dehaze command. So let's, 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 I'm indicating over here on the right. Let's just bump up the dehaze just a smidge here. And you can see if I go to overboard, you can really see it does a magical job of dehazing the fog from the background mountains, which is a really nice effect. So I might bring this up a little bit. I might bring up the clarity a smidge. We could do this with the contrast tool, but for somehow this, these two tools within the Adobe Camera Raw filter really does a nice job of doing this. Um, I'm also going to bring up the exposure to compensate just a, a bit so you can see like so and There we have it. So this is the after this is before after before after it's kind of a subtle effect But just something to think about 
But having said that, though, the things that I really think work well with this is it's tough to get up early in the morning. But as Brian would say, who needs sleep? Sleep's overrated. And so getting up early pays the dividends of catching this castle emerging from the fog like you have. Also, the vantage point that you have with the reeds, I think, does provide a very nice juxtaposing of uh, compositional elements. And then, of course, the exposure settings really do a nice job of keeping the reeds in focus along with the castle and the mountain uh, uh, ridgeline. And the white balance that you chose um, has a nice uh, overall uh, feel of tra tranquility and serenity. So I've overall really nicely done in all those other uh, factors, those two comments I just made, just for your consideration. Well done. All right, so our next one is entitled Nicholas, and this was sent in by Hernan Cantero. And Hernan uh, tells us that this is an F5.6. It's a single light source in the studio. In this picture, you can capture a gesture. I love my hee -ho. All right, so uh, I couldn't agree more. And again, I'll just start off by a couple of things that I thought could be considered for improvement and then go through the things that I thought worked particularly well. So the thing that catches my eye, no pun intended, is that Nicholas's eye is right in the center of the image. And from a viewer's point of view, that is, makes it tough to view the image because there's nowhere for the eye to go. Uh, my eye, that is, or the viewer's eye. So what I would suggest to consider would be to position the um, Nicholas within this image so that his eye is significantly off-center to one of the classic, uh, you know, uh, rule of thirds intersection points or intersection area, something like this. And even that subtle of an effect can, I think at least, bring a little bit more drama is that your eye, when you look at the image, the suspenders go up to his eye and then you go off to the right, and you wonder, what is he looking at? And it evokes that sort of sense of curiosity and you can still see his cute little cap and his shirt and his, his red suspenders. So that was one uh, uh, possibility from a crop. The other one is to um, do a, whoops, is to do a, 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 a portrait orientation in this type of a vertical composition. And what you can see by doing that is that, um, let me bring this over so we can uh, see how that looks, is that because the there's a sense of verticality, if you will, to this pose, this type of a orientation for the shot can work well. It just depends on what your uh, personal preference is. And in both of these, by the way, what you can see I've done is to make sure that we have continuous Nicholas all the way around the border and we've avoided capturing any of this background uh, within the, the, the final composition. So the last thing I thought I would point out as a possibility, and this again in post, is to use the same filter we used before. You can see I'm kind of in love with it, the camera raw filter, and to put in the same type of an adjustment brush, but to just do it on Nicholas's face and do it in such a way that we can like brighten up, the, that we can sort of uh, burn the, uh, the, the final image in a way to brighten this up. So we have the exposure bumped up a little bit. Um, I'm going to bring the clarity back down. We don't need that. We don't need the dehaze to be up. We can bring the exposure up just a smidge like so. And um, that can be sufficient. So we're going to compare before, after, before, after. We can also do the same type of a reverse effect on the, whoops, no, I don't want to do that. Do the same type of a reverse effect on the background to uh, dodge the, the background in effect. And by putting in a, one of these same filters, um, we can orient this around again to fit in with the overall scene. But this time we can decrease the exposure like so. Something like that. And we can do the same type of thing over here. We can create a new filter, see up here, a new filter. And we can do the same type of thing over here. So that by um, making that change, you can see the before and after with the already lightened face. Now, the things that I thought work especially well here, let's go ahead and put in a final crop just to see the final effect. I kind of like this, this, this particular one myself. Um, the things that I think work especially well in this uh, image are just the, the spontaneity of the, of, the, of the moment. And great photography, to me, is all about that, that moment that suddenly comes and goes. Sometimes you can help create it, but you have to be there ready to capture it. I think you've done that here. You get this the sense of his amusement and his curiosity and his inquisitiveness in his gaze and in his facial expressions. The outfit is a very nice outfit with the, the blue cap and the, and the white shirt and the red suspenders. It goes along well with the muted uh, blues and reds of the background. Uh, my co-reviewer uh, this week, Mark English, has a super nice uh, write-up on the use of color on the same Brian Peterson blog that you might like to take a look at. 
in the use of color in your composition. So he's done a really nice job, just an excellent job of, of explaining that. Something to look at there. So anyway, great job, Hernan. Uh, thank you for sending that in, and I uh, look forward to seeing what else you have down the road. So thanks for that. All right, so moving along now, we're going to go to the Arch Street at Sunset image. And this one was sent in by Audra Kral. And Audra writes that uh, she was in the parking lot of her husband's job, waiting for him to get off work. And after about a half an hour of waiting, she took a little drive and immediately noticed the sun. The colors were just beginning to come through, and um, the particular spot sits just off Art Street with, 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 and with where there was once an antique flea market and the county sheriff's substation. And what she loves about this photograph, she says, is the colors with minimal editing, and it's a surprisingly peaceful island retreat. She loves the contrast between the woods and the sunset. She doesn't know what the orange thing is that she managed to capture, but she likes the way that it appears to be light and doesn't take away from the sunset. And what she dislikes is her, she feels that her settings are off completely and the image is missing something, but she's not sure um, what. She wants to point out that she loved the photos she took as a child and she's been taking them since, and this is why she's here. So welcome, Audra. Glad, you're, glad you submitted this image and definitely have a couple of thoughts for you. She's using a camera, a Canon D90 with a, a Nikkor 70 to 300 millimeter lens. Uh, this one was shot with a focal length of 70 millimeters at 1 500th of a second with an aperture of f4 and an ISO of 1000. Well, okay. Well, uh, a couple of things that come to mind, uh, and again, I'm going to go through the things that I thought you might like to consider to potentially improve it, and then some things that I thought worked especially well. So to begin with, this orange object in the foreground, to me it either is a, it's a, it's a light of some kind, maybe a warning light, or it's, a, it's a, a reflector that's catching some reflected light. Easy to get rid of with the content aware tool, a content aware fill tool. So the first thing we're going to need to do is to grab this lasso tool over here on the left, and we're simply going to, uh, first we're going to unlock this background, make it an active layer. We're going to simply lasso our um, object we wish to remove, like so. And then we're going to come to um, Edit, Fill, and then Content Aware. So we have a choice of different types of fills. We're going to choose Content Aware. We're going to click OK. Bam! It's gone. We can deselect it. It's as, it's as if it were never there. Now, a couple other things that come to mind, though, is I think you actually did a very nice job of capturing the correctly exposing the sky in the sunset image. You've captured these crepuscular rays coming off from the, the sun has set behind the horizon. This is a shadow of a cloud or a mountain that's uh, projected up into the sky. Uh, you can see the detail in the, sky, in the cloud, so your choice of, uh, what was it? It was a choice of 1 500th of a second. There's no cloud movement to blur out, and uh, overall the sky is absolutely correctly exposed and uh, well done. The composition also actually uh, looks good from a one-third foreground, two-thirds sky. I think what you're noticing, though, is the darkness of the foreground. And you really have a couple of choices. Um, the first thing, one thing you can do is you can either make this a complete total silhouette, or if you'd like to bring out some elements of the foreground, here's, a, here's one way to do that. And that's the use of uh, a second layer and then blending the two layers together. So what we're going to do is we're going to choose a duplicate layer right just here like so. And as you can see over here on the right, that produces our, we have our original layer and our copy. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to turn off the visibility of the top layer like so, and then highlight the bottom layer to make it active. We're then going to go over to the camera raw filter again. You can tell I really love this filter. And we're just going to really bring up the shadows like so. And you can see we're in this, this is a fairly low resolution JPEG, so we're getting some you know, pretty horrible purple effects. So I may tone that down a little bit like so. Uh, may even decrease the saturation a little bit, see how that helps. And then we're just going to click OK. All right. Um, but now we've affected the sunset as well, so that's not so great. But what we're going to do is we're going to turn the top layer back on, activate it, and then when this little mask tool right down here, you see this? We're going to click on that. And what that does is that create, turns this layer into a mask. We can punch holes through the mask just like a Halloween mask and reveal the layer below it. Super simple to do. We're going to make sure we have black activated over here in the foreground. Turn on our um, adjustment brush. We're going to turn our opacity to, well, let's say, around 50%. It doesn't have to be 40%, 60%, not critical. And we're slowly going to kind of come through and reveal. And so by brushing over this gradually, see what we're doing? We're revealing. So what am I doing? If I turn off the bottom layer, you can see I've burned a hole 
through the top layer. And I'm going to continue to do that like so. Um, and then when I turn the top, the bottom layer back on, we can actually see the bottom layer. So when I turn off the top layer, you can see that we just have uh, that. So we're just going to we can continue to do that in the region that we're interested in combining from just the bottom layer. I'm just clicking with my cursor as I'm doing this and, and speaking. And at the end of the day, we're left with a, a nicely, I'm just kind of going back and forth there. We bring them together, we have a con nice combination of the uh, original, the correctly exposed sky with a perhaps improved foreground. So that's just a general tool of combining two different layers, even if they're both from the same image, in a way that highlights different features of both. So that's something that you can play around with with that. But Audra, I like I say, I really like your eye in uh, composing this. You can con conceivably crop in. There's a little bit of uh, blank sky over here, so maybe what I would have done is just to have that be all tree. I would probably line this up exactly with the tree trunk. That's just a personal choice of mine. You can see how the crop goes right through that tree trunk. And um, that we used to start off with a, a high point over here and a high point over here. But in any event, um, you know, this is the focal point of that rule of thirds. Beautiful composition, beautiful exposure for the sky. You've got things in focus. So keep on shooting, as Brian would say. Keep on sending your images and look forward to seeing what else we have down the road. So thanks for sending that in. All right, so moving on to our next one, we have a, whoops, uh, this one, whoops, here we go. We have this beautiful little guinea pig that's called Sweet Guinea Pig, sent in by Tony Colvin. And Tony writes, I was practicing my pet photography on this sweet model, but he would not sit still except for about three seconds, which is when I got this shot. I was using a Canon 5D Mark II with a 24 to 105 millimeter lens set at 105 millimeters handheld set manually at, at 1 to 50th of a second at an aperture of f4. And uh, so he's saying it should have been at 1 200, so I had to crop the black band at the bottom of the image. I had a Canon 580EX2 on the right bounce out of a white umbrella and a white uh, card on the left to bounce some light onto the left of the face. I believe the reflector was too, uh, too far away since the face was darker than what I wanted. So sure, I can see that here. And uh, Tony, I'll go through again the couple of comments that I thought you, you could consider to uh, potentially improve this and then go through the things that I like. So the first thing that immediately grabs my attention, of course, is the sweet guinea pig's eye. And if I look at this very critically, as is my uh, responsibility here, I'm noticing that the whiskers right around his nose are very sharply in focus, but the same can't be said for the whiskers around the sweet guinea pig's eyes. And that me leads me to believe that the eye focus is a little bit soft. And of course, the cardinal rule of pet photography, people photography, any type of portraits, is to make sure the eyes are crisply in focus, because that's, of course, where the eyes of the viewer uh, go first. So that's something that bears uh, careful scrutiny in um, sending out photographs such as these. It's something that I have to look at myself, and it's just something I constantly remind myself of. The second thing goes to this entire band of uh, basically empty white space around the sweet guinea pig. And I know that that was an intentional choice, but in terms of uh, you know emphasizing the guinea pig, I think you could easily reduce a lot of that. And the degree to which you want to reduce this is, in, of course, entirely up to you. I would not advocate a crop like so, because again, we have the guinea pig right in the center of the image, and again, that's kind of... Um, dull and uh, not necessarily as interesting as the original type of uh, composition you had where he's off on in one third. So I would tend to put the, I'm sort of, as you can see, I'm sort of lining up his eye in the, in the third, one of the third quadrants. I would tend to do a composition such as this. We still have the white background, but we, the focus is so much more on the sweet guinea pig itself. So that's a compositional thing. And then of course, we can go back to my favorite uh, tool, which is the camera raw filter. I think I should dedicate this review session to it. And uh, you can use this tool to lighten up this particular region of the, of the guinea pig. So this can take care of what you can do that through the shadows effect, like so. You can increase the overall exposure, like so. You can actually even play around a little bit with the contrast to uh, bring out some softness and, and so forth. So you can, there's a number of tools within the uh, camera raw filter that you can apply and uh, this is after, this is before, after, to have an effect like so. But now that said, the things that I think do work really well is this is a really cute pose. I mean, you've got him looking straight into the camera. He's trying to hide under this beautifully soft white uh, uh, piece of cloth or fabric that you have here. Um, you've got him just all completely just set down there. So when you really get a sense that he's, he's really playing with the photographer, he's really playing with you, 
and you get a sense of this mischievousness that comes through loud and clear. His eyes are bright and wide open and full of curiosity in life. So uh, it's a beautiful photograph and really glad that you sent that one in. Very nicely done, Tony. All right, so our, our last photograph of the day is the this beautiful shot of the black stallion, which was sent in by Elizabeth Hogg. And what Elizabeth writes is that, much as I like the shooting process, I enjoy, enjoy photo editing even more. Today, the possibilities for endless emotions in our images, through expression, ex expression uh, full of expression emotions in our images, is endless. This shot was made at 1 250th of a second, f6.3 aperture, an ISO of 100, and 125.9 millimeter focal length lens on a Sony Alpha 6000. Excuse me. I chose to make the black and white, um, make the image black and white using one of Topaz's restyle black and white filters. I did so because black horses are neither true black and because I wanted an even background. Horse pastures are seldom pretty and generally have a multitude of confusing shadows and other disruptions. This photo is shot in Iceland, one of my favorite places to photograph. I went there first in 1970 and have made many, have made, have made many journeys to this delight, delightful location. Well, Elizabeth, a great spot. As it turns out, Brian and I are doing a Iceland uh, workshop this coming March in 2017. And uh, it's a beautiful place to be. I love, I've been there myself, and it's, I couldn't agree more. These are beautiful horses. Well, all right, so when I look at the, uh, again, Elizabeth, I'm just going to go through a couple points I think you might want to consider for improvement. It's very hard to find anything, actually, and then go through the many things I think are particularly strong about your image. So the first thing that comes to mind, again, is, uh, as you've heard me say throughout this uh, critique, is this um, large amount of blank space uh, surrounding the horse, the stallion, and the fact that the stallion's eye is right in the center of the, of the image. And this was the same case with Nicholas and the same case with the sweet guinea pig. And it's a very, very common situation. So again, in this case, um, I don't know if you have the proportions, uh, in a, in a stand, uh, what, what proportions you have, but the type of thing that I would strive for would be something more like this and, um, you know, something a little bit more with the, with the eye a little bit to the left of center. As you can see the horse is either galloping across the, the scene like so, or the horse is galloping into the scene. Uh, I would prefer to, I, I myself would probably frame the horse more centrally like so, and um, uh, as, as such. And that would just eliminate the essentially empty background and really bring the attention on the horse, and then have the horse be almost pivoting within the scene. And you're saying to yourself, Mike, give me a break. I was just out there shooting this horse is moving a mile a minute and it's hard to capture. And I, I understand, Elizabeth, I, I really do. These are just things that uh, just come to mind. And the other thing is along those lines is this um, uh, merging of the two, I think these are his two forelegs, aren't they? This is our, these are his hind legs and these are the forelegs. And so this, this foreleg is crossing over uh, this one. And as such, it's just it's, it, would be not, it would be perhaps preferable to have some space between them. So if you have a similar image, like that, that might be the one to go with. But what I mean, so much to love about this image. I love what you've done with Topaz's filter on the on the pasture. It really provides a dreamy like quality to the image, and to the horse's body and his uh, this, his hairs on his um, covering his body. I just love the the wind and the and the hair. I guess these are the forelocks, and uh, you've got his eyes and his his um, his overall head is just beautifully right just there. You really get a sense of motion and fluidity and gracefulness and just the beauty of it is just overwhelming. So I just, I mean, these horses are stunning. And uh, seeing them in person is just uh, really a something, to, uh, something to behold. I think you've captured that here. So very, very nicely done. I like the tonal range in the hair. It's not blown out. It's not too black. It's, I really like the, uh, the, the range there. So anyway, um, Elizabeth and Tony and everybody, uh, thanks so much for sending in your images. I hope that these comments have helped. There's certainly been a couple of themes that have permeated the, uh, this week's critique. And again, thank you for sending those in and look forward to seeing any of the other shots that you'd care to submit someday. Thanks so much again. Take care.